Hey guys, uh, Christopher here, and uh, I'm taking a quick break from my pixel art tutorials to uh, tell you all about a program called Pixel Edit. Um, I've been sent a few requests uh, to go check out this program, get on this program, do some tutorials for this program. So I finally went and checked it out and it is very good. So I can see what, why people were telling me to go check this out. Um, it's being independently developed by a guy called Daniel Cavardfort. And um, he's done a fantastic job. He's really thought about uh, what you want as a pixel artist and what options you're looking for, what options you don't need. So it's very stripped down to exactly what you need. And I can't find anything as of yet that I want that isn't in there. So um, let's dive in. Um, the first thing is uh, you go to this site called pixeledit.com. Uh, and uh, there you can download it. You can check out some information about it. Um, you can get a free version, but I highly recommend that you pay for the beta. Uh, it's all of nine US dollars. Uh, if you want to give him more, you can, and I do highly recommend that because the program is worth more than nine dollars, that's for sure. Uh, the second thing that you will need uh, is uh, Adobe Air, which is a bridging program, and this allows Pixel Edit to run on both PC and Mac. Uh, so uh, Pixel Edit will become the new program that I will be using within my Pixel Art tutorials simply because everyone can use it, and it's very good. Okay, so moving along, uh, I've got the basic sort of window that you start off with here, um, and we'll go up to File, and we'll go New. Um, you've got two options here, Tile Documentation, which is what you use most of the time, but for now I'm just gonna use Single uh, Image, just so it's nice and easy, and go Create. Okay, so I've got my basic image in here. And I'll quickly run through the basic options. Uh, I know this tutorial series is going to get split into three parts. Uh, the first one, which is this one, is going to be the basics. And then I'm going to cover the tile system that's within here. And then I'm going to cover animation. So let's get on with the basics then. Um, a lot of these things are like Photoshop, so they should seem familiar to you if, if you used even GIMP as well. Um, you've got foreground and background color. This switches them. This resets them to black and white. Pretty simple. If you click on this color, you also go to your color picker. Um, this starts closed by the way, and this part works exactly like you would expect it to. You go in here, select your color, okay. But if you open this up, you reveal something really cool, which is, if I move that up there, and I just paint something in here, you've got uh, color stepping, shading, uh, and lightness, which is really cool. So if you're a beginner and you're uh, learning your colors, um, this is a fantastic way to, to actually learn your colors because you can go in here and it really gives you a uh, very good stepping between what you should be doing next. You can see there that that's actually a very smooth transition. Uh, you can obviously do bigger jumps if you like. Oh, swap back. But it's very nice to have that option there. Okay, so moving along. We have something called the uh, selection tool, which is S. I highly recommend you learn the short, the keyboard shortcuts as fast as you can as well. Um, that's the secret to mastering any program uh, is learning the keyboard shortcuts. So you spend less time clicking on things and more time getting done what you want to do. So S for selection tool. Make your selection and then you hold down command and move that to where you would like it to be. Okay, so if you hold down option and command, you can duplicate to where you want it. Pretty cool trick. Okay, so magic wand selection, uh, selects uh, the matching color and, and anything that's joined. So it's a good way to sort of select batch areas. Okay, the pencil tool is D. Sorry, I'll make D select there. Uh, and then D is the pencil tool. Okay, and that works, you know, like your normal pencil tool. Uh, a cool trick with it though, uh, is if you hold down the command key and you use your mouse wheel and go in and out, you make it bigger and smaller, which is a very cool and fast shortcut. Okay, you've also got um, some options up here which you may want to play with. Uh, if you hold down shift and then you click and drag, you will make a line as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, moving along, eraser. E works like a normal eraser. Okay, fill. Uh, Works like you would think any fill button would. Fills in any sort of blank space. Okay, and we have a color replacer. Now this is a very cool tool and uh, you should become familiar with it. So the way that this works 
is it will replace the background color with the foreground color. So that means if you want to replace something, you first need to sample it. So uh, if I hold down Alt, that's the fast way to access the uh, eyedropper. So I'm going to select this color, and then I'm going to swap these. So it's replacing anything that's this color. And we're going to replace that with a red. Okay, so now if I swap back to this tool, uh, I should be able to just paint. And you can see it only goes over that color, which is pretty cool if you want to uh, change the color of a character or you want to like maybe just make a little bit of an adjustment and you know darken that shading just a little bit or you know make minor tweaks uh, it's a fantastic tool so I recommend you get used to it uh, the eyedropper uh, I don't usually swap to that I hold down the alt key most of the time it's just a bit faster uh, these two tools relate to the tiles section so for now I'll skip them because they'll come in part two and uh, the hand tool uh, like Photoshop Hold down spacebar if you want to move your canvas around. You can also fast access that by holding down middle mouse click. Uh, zoom obviously is the Z key, uh, but a fast way to access that is just the middle mouse wheel up and down. Okay, this centers your canvas and then this expands it to the full size that you have available. Uh, undo and redo, you should be accessing those with Apple Z for undo, Apple Y for redo, or Apple Shift Z for redo as well. Uh, this whole bottom section relates to animation. Uh, so we'll skip that for now, and we'll save that for part three. Uh, this part up here is uh, works really well because it's... it's You have probably would have heard me talking about the preview with the um, my PixArts tutorial series because most of the time, you know, you're working fairly large, but this is how big it will actually be in your game and it'll give you your uh, overall like view of how good your character looks when you're making big, like uh, small changes. You can see how it looks overall. Uh, obviously, this works exactly the same way as this, so you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, uh, move it around, um, use these if you really want to, and then this will fit it back to the screen again. Okay, so moving down from there, we have uh, the palette options, and uh, this works pretty standard. I mean, you click on it, and then you can you know paint it in do whatever you need to do. Um, but a cool option is if you go up here and you go to clear palette, we'll get rid of that. Uh, and then I'm going to, what I did was I went online and uh, if you go onto Google and you look up uh, say NES palette or Sega Master System palette, uh, it'll give you uh, an image which is uh, just those colors that were used on those systems. Um, so if you want to duplicate the exact colors that were used on those systems, uh, this is a good way to do it. Or if you uh, like the color scheme of a certain uh, image that you like, so uh, if you find a picture of some game and you really like the colors that they use in that game, uh, find a screenshot of it that isn't anti-aliased. Make sure it it's, should end up being uh, a fairly small resolution if it hasn't been blown up and whatnot. Otherwise, it adds more colors. So, we go to Import Image, uh, and we go down, I've got one here called Palette NES NTSC, and you can see there, it is just all the colors that we used on the NES. So if I go Open, it suddenly added all those. Okay, these seem a little bit out of order, and that's because the width of these isn't right. I know that that palette is actually 16 wide, and if I click OK, we have a beautiful NES palette they're all ready to go. So if I paint with these colors, it should look exactly as it does on the original Nintendo system. Uh, layers. Um, these work exactly as they do in GIMP or Photoshop. So if you're familiar with layers in there, you should be automatically familiar with this stuff. Turn them on and off, add new ones, duplicate them, trash them, all the same options. Uh, it shouldn't be anything confusing there for you. Okay, I think that about does it for the basics. So um, if, you, if you just open up this program, I recommend just going in, draw, delete, you know, create a, create a dude, create a, a chick, create some rocks, create some grass, whatever it takes. Get used to it, just draw in it for a little bit. Um, and then I'll see you in part two for the tiling.